Aloha, how y'all doing today? This is William, and today we'll talk about numbers and characters. Uh, today's show is brought to you by the letter W and the number 5. That was my Sesame Street reference for today. Okay, so we're going to get into a little bit more than uh, the letter W and the number 5. We're going to see how these things are stored on your computer, and we'll get down into the bits, the ones and zeros, like uh, positive negative charges basically, and see how we use that to, to display numbers uh, and letters. Okay, so first though let's talk about what this thing uh, analog is and what this thing digital is. And you might hear uh, analog, you may kind of, when you hear that word you think kind of old school or something. But, or, you know, long, long ago. Anyway, it's a continuous signal, okay, is, is what it really means. So maybe you could think about audio, like your voice. There's a continuous range, you got their tone, pitch, volume, um, that kind of thing. All right, so then think about maybe another example, okay, like lots of examples. So mercury thermometer, okay. So maybe y'all seen this at your grandparents' house or something, but um, anyway, it, it, it's got a continuous uh, range to it. All right, depending on the temperature, the the, the thermometer, the, the mercury goes up and down. Okay, so it's continuous. Okay, um, or say uh, you're at uh, I don't know karaoke or something. So then your your voice, okay, that's continuous. Maybe certain volume, but you know it, it's it's a continuous signal. Okay, lap means too loud yeah, or too soft. Okay, and then a lot of times we think analog, oh, that's kind of like things from long ago, all right, but it really just means continuous signal. Okay, so let's, let's contrast that with digital. What does digital really mean here? Okay, so digital um, here means that the signal, you can break it down into discrete parts. So... You can, you can break it down, I guess, into specific parts might be an easier way to, to say that. And um, what well, is not continuous, you got these different uh, small parts that have a certain value that it's set to. It's set to this value. And the data in a computer, okay, it's actually set. Okay, it's either a zero or a one, and that is it. Okay. And you know, even inside the computer, we say zero, one, but it's really um, a different voltages, okay? And actually, as it increases to a voltage or decreases to a voltage, um, it's actually it's actually got a continuous state. But when you put it into logic and and, and it reads the the voltage and that kind of thing, uh, it is in, in two different um, what basic states, and then it does. You know, it will shift, though, uh, between those states. So it's not 100% this or that. At yeah. uh, any rate, let's see a little bit more detail here. And we'll talk about bits. And again, you know, we've got 0, 1 stored as a bit. Okay, oh, that's what we call it, a bit, the 0 or 1. And typically the 0 is off. And depend on the, how they store it in the computer, but typically it's just off. And it's stored as no charge. Uh, the one is on, it's stored as a negative charge. You might think, well, why is that positive? Um, at any rate, uh, I'm not sure all the engineering details there, but you know, you, you can just you can tell again that there, there, there's a, a difference. Okay, it's got no charge at all. Okay, boom, it's a zero. Oh, uh, if it's negative, okay, okay, then it's 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 a one. Uh, even though there is some a little bit of uh, continuality between those two charges. Okay, then we'll, we'll talk about how to group these things together. So uh, you take one bit, you get eight of them, you get bytes. Um, might have been some early computer scientist's uh, sense of humor here, I guess. Okay, so you got a byte that's made of, of eight of these bits. And just, you know, historically that's how they stored um, characters on a computer. So even today, uh, a lot of computers still organize the data by the bytes. Okay, so again, that, that's, that's storing eight bits, so eight ones or zeros uh, are in one byte. Okay, so if we think about, um, all right, so we'll talk a little about numbers here and contrast the, um, 
what you call the bits with the decimal number. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the numbers. I know some people might have math phobia. Ah, math. Um, but, you know, and, and money's math. Um, uh, you know, the time is math. So there, there's a lot of math in our days. And uh, please don't be scared about math. So um, I'll talk a little bit about math here, so be patient. Okay, let's see this next, next slide here. Yes, be brave, be brave, folks. Okay, we'll talk first about uh, base 10, the decimal number system. It's like you got 10 fingers, right? 10 toes. At any rate, so each digit in the decimal number system uh, corresponds to the power of 10, and this will depend on the position uh, in the number. Okay, so oh, what, what, what? And then we'll talk about the powers of 10. So it goes to the Tenth of the zeroth power is, is 1. Tenth of the first power is 10. Tenth of the, to the second power is 100. Okay, so it keeps going up as you go um, from the right to the left. Okay, and then, you know, you're so used to decimal numbers now that you probably just think, hey, that, that's just almost uh, common sense or, 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 you know, you don't really think about it. But I'm going to show you exactly how this decimal thing works, the decimal number system. Okay, you might not even be aware of what's going on. Okay, so for the base 10 here, let's see. So, for example, just 23. You know, 23 is just, hey, that's 23. Actually, you can break it down to 2, to the, the, the two times 10 and 3 times 1. Okay, so then you get your 20 and your 3. That's the real, I guess, meaning behind 23. Uh, we can do the same, or some more examples. So 568. Well, 500, of course, is 5 times 100. 6 D is 6 times 10, and A is 8 times 1. Okay, you can see you got the powers of 10 there written out as well. All right, so say 1,000. Um, that would be 1 times 10 to the third power. All right, so 10 to the third power is 1,000, plus 4 times 10 squared, 7 times 10 to the first, 9 times uh, 10 to the 0, which is 1. Okay, so 1,479 can be broken down to 1,000 plus 400 plus 70 plus 9. Okay, so hopefully uh, that makes sense, and we'll see how we we'll do the same thing for the, uh, the binary numbering system. Okay, so let's, let's see here. All right, so when we do base 2 instead of base 10 now. Okay, so the binary numbers, again, they have two digits, digits uh, 0 and 1, and it corresponds to the power of 2, because there's two of them. So it's like 10, you got 10 different numbers. 0 through 9. So 2, you got two numbers, 0 or 1. All right, so what looks like 10, 10, or 1, 0, 1, 0, uh, 1 times 2 to the third power, okay, or 0 times 2 to the second, uh, 1 times 2 to the first, 0 times 2 to the zeroth power. And so what does that work out to? Well, 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the first is 2, and the zeros, of course, are just all zeros, yeah. So that's really 10 decimal. It's like 10, 10, but it's really uh, 10 decimal, yeah. 10, 10, and binary is 10 decimal. Okay, so let's throw in a few more examples here. And um, so here's a longer one, right? 11001001. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. Dang, man. Okay, but you just go right to left. So we're doing two to the zero, two to the third, two to the six, to the seventh. Kind of left out the zeros as a shortcut. But if we add that together, 128 is two to the seventh, two to the sixth, 64. Two to the third is eight. Um, and then 1 times 1 is 1, so we got 201, okay? So, all right, so that, that takes up a lot of space, yeah? So, it, you know, just, you know, the number 10 is like 10, 10, right? Okay, so there, there's kind of a shortcut, kind of shortcut, I guess. Um, so this is hexadecimal numbers. And the hexadecimal numbering system is base 16 now, okay? So that's even more than... A, uh, than the, 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 the decimal number system, okay? So it's shorter, it's easier to read than binary. Easier, it's easier to convert back and forth. But you have 16 digits. And uh, for number 10, it's really the, the letter A. B is 11, C12, uh, D13, E14, and F is 15. Uh, and you usually have a 0x in front of these to signify that it's a hexadecimal number. Okay, so let's kind of see uh, how this works here. So I'll throw an example here. So 
zero x, one, two, three, so zero x, that's telling us it's hexadecimal. And then one times 16 to the second power, so then you got two, 16 to the first, and three times 16 to the zeroth power. So now you're looking at uh, 256, and then two times 16, and three times one, and then let's see what kind of number we get out of here. Uh, so we got to add those up, add up the decimal numbers, and we got 291 decimal. Okay, so the uh, you know, base 16 um, is just a shorter way to represent the uh, binary uh, numbering system. And um, it's real quick to switch back and forth between the two. Uh, we, don't, we won't get into that much detail in this, this uh, lecture, but um, it's pretty cool stuff uh, if you go along and take uh, classes such as ICS-212, C and C++ programming, and we get into a lot more detail. And we actually write like uh, a computer security uh, program um, that's, that's real life that the government uh, has a standard for. So stay tuned for more fun stuff in these classes now. Okay, so let's look at a chart here next. And um, so I'm just kind of showing you all, okay, the binary, the decimal, and hexadecimal, uh, how these correspond. And um, first couple of numbers are okay, but again, you kind of see the hexadecimal at A is decimal 10, our binary 1010. And then this next part gets into even uh, C, D, E, and F, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15. You can see the binary numbers there. And it looks like the number 10,000 uh, in binary is, is decimal 16 or hexadecimal 10. Okay, so depending on, on your um, counting system, um, then it's, it's got these different uh, ways of representing it. Okay, so there's just a few more slides here. So we'll talk about the character representation. That's kind of what we we're talking about at the beginning of this, this class. And we used to have what's called the uh, ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And it's a standard way to represent the binary um, format on computers with characters. And it's 7-bit encoding, so we can represent uh, to the seventh power, which is 128 different characters. So you got a small range of characters. And uh, we can kind of see here for our character codes that, uh, okay, so the character zero is 48 decimal or 30 hexadecimal or 00110000. Uh, if we throw in some letters here, so uh, the letter A is 65 decimal or 41 hexadecimal. And then the letter uh, lowercase a is something different, 97 decimal or 61 hexadecimal. And you can see 01100001 is what the computer actually sees. Okay, so ASCII is great, but that only represents the uh, English um, letters from the English language. So to represent all the languages in the world, we have Unicode. And um, for this, you can encode any language because it's up to 32 bits. Okay, so you got um, lots and lots and lots of space to represent the, all these characters. And go check it out. So go online and go to this URL, and it's got a cool chart of all kind of languages. It's even got uh, languages, um, what, like uh, different Egyptian um, uh, letters and also old Persian uh, letters as well. So it's really cool stuff to see. But check that out, and uh, that's it for today. Uh, we'll see you all later. All right.